Yes, another Gamma Shift video. Now, Blackmagic Design just released Adventure Resolve 20.2.2, and that's a big deal for us Mac users, because now our viewers and the interface over here can match our QuickTime exports and using Rec. 709 Scene instead of Rec. 709A. So today I'm going to talk about all the settings you need to know for your project settings so that you get a match when you export it, and it'll match when you upload it to YouTube, as well as the one time you might not want this checkbox that they've automatically selected for you. So let's take a look. First, let's take a look at this automatically check preference on a Mac. So in DaVinci Resolve 20.2.2, come down to Preferences, take a look at System General, and it's Use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewers. Now this isn't new. What this does though is it allows DaVinci Resolve to communicate with Color Sync, which is the Mac's color management system. So that's found under System Settings. You'll find your monitor that you're currently looking at and the color profile. I'm using an LG Ultrafine. I'm not using a specific Mac display, although if you do have one, Choose the option for BT709, 1886, whatever it is, like on my laptop, I would use that. Because it. The, what's really nice about that is it sets the brightness level appropriate. And what really matters, to be honest, is the surrounding environment you're in. So if you do this on a train, when the light's blasting through, who knows what you're going to get. And I also want to preface this, if you have the ability, or it really matters, get yourself a Blackmagic Ultra Studio 3G or something. They don't cost a whole lot and send it out as a clean feed to a reference display. But this is gonna help you out for those of us that we just need to see things in the viewer, in the GUI. All right, so this is basically what's happening with that checkbox. Now what's new is viewers match QuickTime Player when using Rec. 709 Scene. Just use Rec. 709 Scene. Now what is 709 Scene? Well, it's 709 Gamma 2.4. So don't overcomplicate things by choosing Gamma 2.4 and then do I check this box or not check this box? What 709 scene is, it's, it's the broadcast 2.4 Gamma with the apply forward OOTF, which you want to have checked anyways. So the point is, is this is going to be called different things in different parts of the software, which we're going to get to. But 709 scene is what you want. And it's going to apply the correct Gamma tags as well, as well as send the correct metadata across to this color sync. All right, so this is just part one of the solution. We need to set up our project settings next. Project settings. So let's take a look at our project settings first because the output also affects how this viewer is interacting. It's not just that checkbox. So we need to use Rec. 709 scene here. I'm going to open up my project settings. We'll look at color management and I'll change my color science to DaVinci YRGB color manage first because this is a new ability. We could not do a color manage project level and get a viewer to match on a Mac with a QuickTime export. So what I'll do is I'm going to change color processing mode just to HDR to keep it simple. And what's important to know is the output color space SDR Rec. 709 is Rec. 709 scene. So this is the magic switch you want to have checked. If you don't believe me, just uncheck automatic color management and you'll see that's actually Rec. 709 scene. So this is doing several things behind the scenes for us, uh, behind the scenes. <laughs> Essentially what this is doing, it's tone mapping it out so we can see it properly on the display once I hit save. But it's also sending metadata across to color sync with that checkbox we already looked at so that all this works. So the point is, SDR Rec. 709 is Gamma 2.4 with the forward OOTF checked is what you want. Hit save and you don't have to think about hardly anything else. So this doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Automatic HDR 709, you're going to be good for most cases. I'll hit save and if you had metadata in the clip, it would have transformed and would have put the saturation in. It would have looked like there was a LUT applied, except way better than a LUT because you have access to all that dynamic range and color information still in the shot. Um, but if there's not metadata in it, like this shot right here, this was shot with the Sony a7 IV, all you do to color manage it is you can batch select them in your bin, you right click and you say input color space. And again, this only appears once you've turned on color management. Choose the camera with the log space and the, the gamut that was shot. So this is S Gamma 3 Cine S Log 3. And as soon as you do that, it automatically sets it up as a starting point for you to make a creative grade. Now, some clips will have metadata in them, like raw clips. This one down here is a Blackmagic raw clip. It already got the saturation applied because it knows what it came from. And some QuickTime will do this as well. So this right here was shot with the Blackmagic iPhone camera app in Apple Log, and it got the saturation and contrast as well. Now, this was a cloudy day, so not a lot, but you have all the information. So this is a great way for most folks to work because you don't have to think about a lot of stuff. You don't need a lot of extra nodes. I can come to the color page under the HDR panels, use this global exposure. In fact, I might use my panel here. 
let's say I want to make this a little bit darker so it you know it, it was maybe a little overexposed or maybe too cool I can warm this up just like that and I've got all of the color information there that's it now to export it oh one other thing I want to point out before I export uh, someone asked uh, <laughs> photo Joseph you asked about uh, photographs and, and sRGB images well I care a lot about brand colors. I do commercial advertising where brands have to always match. One thing I did notice is using this setting, if I want this image here to match Preview, which is another color managed app, um, I don't actually want to tag this as what it is in a managed project. So if I, if I were to tag this over here to input color space set to sRGB, which is what the photograph actually is, you'll see it got quite a bit lighter in this viewer. And if I take a look at this over here, this is quite a bit darker in this part of the gamma. So what I'm suggesting for now, I'm DaVinci Resolve is always changing, is probably leave your sRGB photographs at Rec. 709 scene if you want those two to match. Now, beyond that, I don't really know what's going on there. So maybe things will change. Maybe it is correct. Um, but if you really don't want things to change, we're gonna take a look at that next using an unmanaged project where you can just leave things uh, that you want completely uh, alone. Oh, by the way, someone's gonna say, Chadwick, you can just leave that image alone if you right click and say bypass color management. Yes, you can. Uh, however, as soon as it gets stacked on the timeline or there's a transition, some sort of blending, um, it has to use that color management pipeline and so the colors will change so in general if you need certain things to not change like brand colors um, don't use a color managed project but that's for such a small niche group of people now let's take a look at project settings for node-based color management so for node-based color management we'll come down here and we'll change this to DaVinci Wire GB which just basically means we're still letting the computer do the color management we're just using nodes to do it instead what this allows you to do is choose a different timeline color space. And this is just metadata, this section here. So this isn't actually doing anything to your footage, but a real common thing here would be to set this to whatever your, your native camera space is. I'm gonna set this up to Sony S Gamut 3 Cine S Log 3, because that's what my first shot was. But you could use DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. You just need two nodes for this to work because you need to go into DaVinci Intermediate and then back out. But what's really important here is your output color space needs to be Rec. 709 scene. So we'll take a look down here, Rec. 709, not Gamma 2.4, Rec. 709 scene, because this is gonna do two important things in an unmanaged project. First, it's gonna tag your footage correctly on output. It's gonna give it a 111 NCLC tag. Okay, the other thing it's actually doing behind the scenes that a lot of people aren't aware of, this is actually sending metadata that's talking with that preference, use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewers checkbox, to the color sync uh, so that you get that correct uh, overlay on here so that things match. So it's, it's actually two things. It does not do any tone mapping or um, altering to the actual pixel data itself. It's metadata only. It's metadata on export when you use the project settings. And it's also metadata to the, the viewer here with that checkbox. Okay, hopefully that's super clear. We'll hit save. And so how would we do this with nodes since we don't have project level set up? Well, I'm gonna come to my node here and we'll put a color space transform. Really simple tool. Shift spacebar allows you to pull up your whole list of effects. It's the new fast way to do it. In fact, you can see if you could just start typing color space transform, uh, you can get to it, but if you've had, you've researched for it before, it's in your history. If I hit return twice, actually, I guess I have to click it here. I'll get access to that. Under effects, what do we need to do here? We need to say our input color space. Well, actually, because I had already set my project setting timeline color space to S Gamma 3, S Log 3, if all your footage is the same, you can just leave this as use timeline because that's what that's saying right there. But the output, is going to be Rec. 709 and Rec. 709. So here's the thing. Rec. 709 here for Gamma, this is Rec. 709 scene, okay? And it's Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Those are the same thing. We, they're actually the same thing. The biggest difference here is this Apply Forward OTF is unchecked when you choose 
the Rec. 709, if you choose Gamma 2.4, it's checked, but it's gonna give you the exact same result. So make it easier on yourself and just say, I want my output space to be 709, 709. Now this doesn't do the tagging, that's what the project level setting does. That's right here, which when we go to export it, everything on this should match just fine. Um, I'm going to just export the single clip for now. We'll hit quick export, make it real fast. And I ran a test of this earlier to make sure it worked. We'll say version two. We'll come over here and we'll open that up. And you should see a good match between these two. In fact, if you ever want to compare frame to frame, come up here, right click and say record frame. And then on the QuickTime player itself, if you click this a couple times, you can cycle through to look at frames. So if I want to look at frame 150 from my export, then you can actually compare apples to apples. Now, the other thing to know is the QuickTime player viewer itself has a drop shadow on the interface. So you'll see th there will be a little bit of a, a shadow from one to the other, but I'm getting the same colors, uh, to my eyes at least, between the two. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is why would you ever want to uncheck the Use Mac Display Color Profiles for Viewer setting? Well, <laughs> let's take a look. I'm going to close this viewer out right here, and it has to do with color sampling and color picking. So the point is, is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add a solid color generator down here. So this could also work with, um, it would be an issue for if you needed to color pick the image for text or something like that. But with a solid color down here, if I grab the color picker and I grab the little eyedropper, the Mac eyedropper, and I let's say I select this color right here, this blue, which that blue color is 1178 and you see right here I'm actually getting a different value and the reason why is with that checkbox selected there's actually a view LUT that's actually getting sampled at least with this current version of Resolve which is going to give me the wrong color that blue is not going to match in other words so if I take this over here let's take the crop tool and move this and you'll see between those two right there we don't have a match. How do we get a match? You just turn off that checkbox in the preferences. So command comma that gets us to our preferences system general, just turn that off, at least for the color sampling part of this. Choose this again, color picker, 117AC, 117ACA, <laughs> and now you can see between those two, I, I've got a solid match. So the point is, anytime you want to do color picking with the viewers that are either on the color page or the edit page, it's the same viewer, make sure you turn off the setting for use Mac display color profiles for viewers. Um, obviously, if you turn it on afterwards, you've already got that solid color or text color set, and you should be good to go. Oh, and before I go, I want to mention, if you go to the deliver page to export from there instead of quick export, You'll find as you scroll down under advanced settings, there's a section for gamma tag, color space tag. You don't need to change this. As long as your project setting is set to Rec. 709 scene output, you're gonna get the proper tags. So don't worry about this. Leave it as same as project. Hey, my name is Chadwick. I'm a finishing artist here in New York and a DaVinci Resolve Master Trainer. I super appreciate you for taking the time to learn this with me today. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.